Hey guys, it's Renetta again. Um, I want to start off by apologizing for just yapping about nonsense last episode. Um, Doja just, it just, it was just a lot, so I'm sorry. But today we'll be going over Party Next Door's um, Lose My Mind, which was four songs, 14 minutes. Lose My Mind was a mate, the song was a mate, well, the album too, but, or it's not even an album, but. Lose My Mind was amazing. I have a few playlists of mine that I'm going to put it into. Maybe a few sneaky link ones. We'll, we'll have to see. Um, I love the Party Up by DMX sample that he used. Because it's one of my favorite DMX songs. Because it just, it's just such a vibe. It gets you lit. It gets you crunk. You ready to, you just ready to go crazy. Whenever you hear Party Up by DMX, you, like you have to, like you just have to lose your mind. Yeah. Um... Real Woman was not my fave, but it was a nice little late night drive vibe. We'll probably go on my late night drive playlist, um, because of course I have a late night drive playlist. That's all I have to say about Real Woman. It wasn't like, it just wasn't for me. Obviously, but he's making music for men. I'm not a man, and that's okay. I still love him. Resentment. I loved it! It was so good, so iconic. It was an iconic Party Next Door beat. I loved it. He went to his roots. He went for us. He he went for me. He loves me. He loves you too, I guess, but he loves me more. Her old friends, the first line he said, I was like, sir, you're talking real crazy right now. It caught me really off guard. He was talking real crazy. Um, it's really good. It's a vibe. You will probably see it on my Instagram um, notes, music notes, or on my Instagram story. So tune in to see. Follow me on Instagram. Follow Melina Media on Instagram. Um, but in order of the songs, the order I like the songs from most to least was Resentment, Lose My Mind, Her Old Friends, and Real Woman. Um, obviously I love the font of the, the titles of the songs because it's part next door but party has always been consistent in his music and we love that he has not changed he has not dabbled in something new he knows what we like and he keeps it there um that's why i feel like his fandom is small in comparison to like drake or something i could be wrong that could just be me i don't hear a lot of guys say oh yeah i love party next door blah 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 no you hear them say i love drake i love future i love j cole i love kendrick who's better who's better i love i like party next door um so pretty small but we're very loyal he keeps it consistent so we have to stay loyal we have to he doesn't do us dirty so um yes i will give this these four songs an eight out of ten um, I feel like if he puts out more, cause I feel like he's not done. Like he just did this in the middle of the night low key. Like he just said, here we go. Here we go. I have some new songs. Here we go. And we said, Ooh, <laughs> thanks party. I didn't know you cared about us, you know? And he cares about us. So if there's more to come, I'll let you know. Um, yeah, I'll see you next week. If there's not more from party, I'll do a few single reviews cause um, Willow Smith, I know she's putting out a new um, project. Cause she put out a song the other day and I said, ooh, she's getting ready for the summer. She knows us, she loves us. I'm ready. Okay, thanks, see you guys later. Oh, that's hot, that's hot. Hi guys, welcome back to a segment that we like to call That's, That's Hot. Hot. I'm Van Rosie. And I'm Leah. And we are gonna be talking about a little drama that's happening within the rap Girl, community. let's talk about this grown men drama, okay? Hey, 
Be nice. Am I wrong? <laughs> be Am nice. I wrong? Be nice. Be respectful. Am I wrong? <laughs> We're not supposed to be talking about that. Just making sure, just making sure. <laughs> but today, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be talking about the rap drama that is happening between Drake, Kendrick Lamar, Metro Boomin, Future, and many more. Mm -hmm. Now, can you please like educate them on what was happening last week? Now, let's talk about this album that he dropped. Isn't it, we don't trust you? We don't trust you, what an album name. Now he had features from everywhere, from Metro Boomin, Future, The Weeknd, even Kendrick himself. Now, you know Kendrick gonna be hopping on anything. I'm saying, <laughs> okay? He's really selective when it comes to who he uh, collaborates with. Mm -hmm. So when he was hopping on this, he had everybody's attention. Oh yeah. And when this album came out, it was a certified hit. One of the top songs on that album was Like That. And that was where Kendrick was throwing a little disrespect uh -oh. at our main man, Drizzy Drake. Not him trying to get involved. Kendrick, baby, please. You know they have little history. They got a little <sighs> yeah. beef from back in the old 10. Kendrick got beef with everybody. Really? Yes, ma'am. Oh, we gonna get into that in a minute, <laughs> but. Like, you know, like once he started getting into that drama, everybody's just like, what's Drake gonna say? Oh my goodness, Drake, what's Drake gonna say? What's next, what's next, what's next? What's he gonna say, what's he gonna do, what's he gonna do? Drake was listening to this the whole time. I'm just saying, Drake needs to grow up. He <laughs> cannot, he cannot, I'm no, tired of him. Like, the way that he did it was a little strategic though, because Drake listened, he was hearing y'all say, oh, he needs to come back with a comeback, he needs to come back with a diss track. He was listening to them. I don't know, Rosie. But he did respond, though. Them lyrics, though, I'm just saying, they could have been a little bit more creative, but you know, we'll get into that. We're, go we're gonna get into that in a minute, but one thing that I would like to talk about is the fact that everybody decided to switch sides and make Drake uh -oh. the main problem. Drake's the villain now. We've always known this, though. We have always known this. You know Drake has some fans that are ride or die for him. Like, those are some of his main ones. He has yeah. some main ones. Yeah. But let's get into these lyrics on this new Drake song. Okay, let me hear it. Now, Drake came out with his new diss track that he likes to call Push Up. You guys gonna figure out why he called that Pusha. In I'm ready. Let me know, girl. Alrighty. So one of the first, I'm gonna read you guys a few lyrics, and I want I want to conversate about it. Okay, okay. Let's talk about it. So the first one that I would like to mention is one that he had over Future, because he had a few things to say about him. He uh -oh. was like, Yeah, to Future, he said, I could never be nobody's number one fan. Your first number one, I had to put it in your hand. Oh, okay. Okay, what do you think, first of all? That's a poor. That's a poor. <laughs> That's kind of a poor. Okay, that. yeah, he has something with that. I'll give him that. I'll give him it. Like, that, it kind of ate, though. Like, okay. It, it glided off. When I said it, I was like, mm. Okay. This is my head, but. Just a little bit, just a little bit. But to be fair, it's true, though. Like, future. You are hopping on everybody's song but your own. Yeah. When's the last That's time Future came out with his own album? Like a solo dolo. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're already not a good father. You want people to say you're Whoa. not a good father. Whoa. Whoa. Rosie. Am I wrong? Rosie. Am I wrong, though? <laughs> Am I wrong? Okay. Okay. Future, get in the studio, have a solo moment get in touch with your connection mm -mm -mm. then you can start talking again because right now it seems like you need a little backup from the backup she say he ain't a good father rosie he ain't a good rosie ain't a, i mean you be seeing how another man is taking care of your kid i digress though i digress okay. we're not gonna okay. talk about your baby daddy's skills because you were rocks anyway okay. we okay. gotta move on we gotta <laughs> move on <laughs> the next one the weekend <laughs> the next one is the weekend now Drake had to say, and you boys got rich. You, when you boys got rich, you had to run it. You had to run from it. Cash blowing able bread out here tricking us. We do for B. He do it for <laughs> Now these we <laughs> Jayhawks, can we, I need to say some of this stuff really quick. So Jayhawks, can we work on that? But, the beefs are killing me. But. He had a little something to say about the weekend because the weekend is Canadian. You know those Canadians gotta stick together. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But they wasn't sticking together. The weekend ran over to Metro real quick. He didn't hesitate. Mm -hmm. So he's talking about how the weekend he was supposed supposedly signed to OBO, which oh. is Drake's little late. Oh. But now he's uh -oh. with Metro. 
now he's over there with them. As y'all can tell, she's done her research. I've been doing, I've been doing She's done her research. I've been, I've been, I've been speaking it. Been can we just get a little bit off topic? Yeah. I want to ask you something. Yes, I, I get you. Yes. Do what? you prefer the new weekend or the old weekend? You know I got to go with that old weekend. The trilogy album was his okay. best okay, album. Okay, just making sure. Just making sure we was on the same page here. Especially Echoes Inside. You know that new show that he came out with? Which one? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> You anyways, okay. anyways, old weekend, we miss you. Mm -hmm. We want you back, baby. Whatever you were doing before, do it again. Moving on. Yep. <laughs> anyways, so the next one I would like to talk about, which I thought was going to be the biggest issue, mm -hmm. but it's not even the biggest issue. Okay. When Drake came for Kendrick. Now, oh. he had he did have quite a few things to say about Kendrick Lamar. Give us the bar. Give us the bar. Alrighty. What they say. The one I would like to talk about is Maroon 5 needed a verse from you. You better make it witty. Then you needed a verse for the Swifties. Top said drop. You better drop and give him 50. Uh-oh. And then he came up and said, what's a prince to a king? He a son. And I'm just like, whoa. Did Drake just call himself a king? But to be fair, Kendrick did call himself prince. Mm, I don't know about that. But here's the thing, though. Kendrick did call himself a prince. And he's practically... Kendrick put himself at that pedestal below and called himself his song. I'm just saying though, for Drake, out of all the rappers, he should not be the king of rap, y'all. But, dude, is Kendrick? That's a good point. I mean, hey, love you Kendrick, you a legend, but hey, we just gonna have to keep it moving, keep it pushing. Mm -hmm. Oh, we didn't even get to talk about the last one. Uh oh. Our favorite one. Well, come on, we got time. Metro Boomin. Now, Metro Boomin wants some more. <sighs> you guys are going to have to stick around for part two because we got a little more for you. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, our time's up, baby. Alrighty, well, I would like to thank everybody for tuning in to this segment that we like to call That's, That's Hot. Hot. I'm Van Rosie. And I'm Leah. And we're going to take it to break for Melanin Media, but I'm going to say have a great day, Jayhawk. Bye. Bye. Break from the ads? If you tap now to watch a short video. Are you sick of ads on Spotify, but don't feel like paying $10.99 for premium? Well, want no further. Spotify offers premium for only $5.99 for college students. All you have to do is sign up for Spotify, connect your student email to your account, and you can get back to what's important. Hello everyone and welcome back to Melon and Media Slice of Insight where we will be leaving you with food for thought from Black History. I'm Kelsey. And I'm Alicia. Did you know that Richard Mayhew was a painter? Born in 1929 in Amityville, New York, in his youth he spent his summers observing artists that would come to his hometown to paint the vistas and short shorelines. Soon he started borrowing his father's paint and brushes to, and to create his own work. His paternal grandmother supported his artistic pursuit by teaching him his native relationship to and kinship with the earth. At 14, an artist recognized his ambition and taught him the, fun the fundamentals of drawing and painting. By age 17, he had committed to being an artist. In 1947, Mayhew moved to New York where the abstract expressionist movement was popular. Through studies at the Brooklyn Museum of Art, Pratt Institute, and Columbia University, he explored the connection between landscapes and the spirituality. He called his painting Mindscapes. Mayhew was his first solo show in 1955, then won the John Hay Whitney Fellowship in 1959. This allowed him to study at the Accademia del Bell Arti in Florence, Italy. During his time in Europe, he found himself particularly inspired by the light and color characteristics of French Impressionism. Upon returning to, a, to New York, he joined Spiral, a collective of black artists focused on the political and cultural landscape of the U.S. However, unlike the work of his fellow Spiral artists, Mayhew did not use overt narrative or figurative elements and instead examined the spirit of the time and the civil rights movement. 
through color. In his addition to his artistic career, Mayhew is a respected educator, having held positions at the Brooklyn Museum Art School, Art Students League, Smith College, and Pennsylvania State University. He retired as Professor Emeritus in 1991 and moved to California where he continues to paint at age 100. 100 years old? <coughs> wow. Sorry, that was just very interesting to yeah. me. Um, Mamie Johnson was the first black woman pitcher for the Negro Leagues. Johnson was born in 1935 in South Carolina, and as a child, she would often play baseball with her uncle. In 1953, she was signed to the Indianapolis Clowns while working at an ice cream shop during the week and playing baseball on the weekends. Wow. When she wasn't pitching, she would play second base. In 1955, Johnson retired. She won 33 games and lost only eight. She had a second career as a licensed practical nurse, and she worked at Sibley Hospital in Washington, D.C. for 40 years before retiring in 1995. Marian Anderson was the first black woman to perform at Metropolitan Opera. Anderson was born in 1897 in Philadelphia. She began performing at the age of 10 when she joined the People's Choir. Anderson graduated from South Philadelphia High School in 1921 and attempted to enroll in the Philadelphia Music Academy, but was rejected due to her race. She then pursued private studies with prominent music instructors, Giuseppe Baghiati and Agnes Resim Schneider in 1925 at the age of 28. Anderson won first place in a singing competition sponsored by the New York Philharmonic. Philharmonic. After this, she stayed in New York to pursue private studies. Three years later, she sang for the first time in Carnage Hall. Two years after that, she made her first European debut in Wigmore Hall in London. Anderson spent the early 1930s touring Europe but she returned to the United States in 1935 to make her first official recital appearance at Town Hall in New York City. Anderson had over 1,500 pieces she was able to perform, sang in nine languages, and performed on four continents. She received national honors throughout her life from the NAACP and United States Nation in the Grammys. Grace Bunbury was the first black opera singer to perform at the Bayreuth Festival in Germany. Bunbury was born in 1937 in St. Louis, Missouri, STL. At a young age, she became interested in music after attending Marian Anderson's concerts. Through years of the encouragement, she won a local radio contest at the age of 16. The prize was to perform at the Author Godfrey Talent Scout Show. Then, Bunbury attended college at Boston University and Northwestern University, where she met Lot Lehman. Lehman invited Bunbury to study at the Music Academy of the West, where she, her gift was advanced. Through the help of Jacqueline Kennedy and the American Embassy in Paris, Bunbury made her debut as an amnerist in performance of Ida. By age 23, she was invited to audition in Beirut for a new production of Tan Hauser. Bunbury was, the, was cast as the role of Venus. Despite the backlash, she received her performance marked her as the first black woman to perform at the Beirut Festival. Thank you for tuning in to Slice of Insight. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at Melanin Media KU to keep up with us and find more content from the show. Have a great weekend, Jayhawks!